Hello and welcome to another episode of Nothing Definitive. I'm Sam Carlson, and today I want to talk about some various thoughts regarding government and politics. Okay, first of all, it's important to note that these are just ideas, concepts. Some of them could work, some of them might not work. Uh, but they're just a chance for you to think about government and politics in a maybe a different way. Okay, so the first topic is the presidency. The presidency should be much less important. I think it's so stupid how we have this one position in supposedly a democratic nation that's run by the people and has representatives. Why in the world do we have just this like one position that's got all the focus, all the pressure on it? It just seems like we're we're still trapped in this old ideal about monarchies or something like that. We we should just the presidency in my opinion should be this kind of glorified diplomatic position. He's just like a representative, you know, he gives he gives important speeches and tries to like hype up the nation or or help them through a tough time and travels the world and represents us and stuff like that, which he does. But the fact that we have this like partisanship where, you know, we push all the blame on on our president when things go wrong, he should just be like, hey, I have nothing to do with that. Look at Congress, look at Senate, look at uh, the House. They're the guys who are making laws and trying to figure things out. That's, I mean, that's a whole team of people that are trying to figure things out. I am just a, like, glorified representative. Um, I think that would be really awesome. That was the, That's the first idea. Second idea is partisanship. Why in the world do we have partisanship? We should literally make it illegal to like use the words Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, whatever. Those should not even be part of our political vocabulary. It should be like, maybe not illegal, but it should be like severely frowned upon. Forming groups like, like the Democratic Party and stuff should be like either illegal or it should just be like hated if someone tries so come comes out and says yeah I'm a Democrat people should be like oh what an asshole he shouldn't have said that like that's terrible um, we don't need that it should be folk we should just have people that are running that are interested in different topics and we vote based on who seems um, like a you know a good candidate based on their ideals and stuff not not like because one of the problems that they always talk about is is now we've gotten we've gotten to a situation where people like don't want to vote outside the party because they'll get reprimanded by the party. Dumb, P plain and simple, just stupid. We should all, we also need to get rid of like the campaign financing. Uh, the fact that you know if you want to even have a legitimate chance of running for presidency or other positions that you need like you know maybe a couple million dollars so you can. Uh, pay for your expensive travel and ads and stuff. I mean, you can do fundraising and things. Why don't we just have, like, we, we spend so much money on all on lots of useless things in our government. Let's just cut one of them and, like, pay for uh, every four years. We just have this pool of money that is equally distributed among uh, of candidates to fund their campaigns equally. And it's just like we have like, you know, public forums that are streamed online and they're on TV and we have like really great like non-biased websites that list off all the candidates in their, in their, you know, their positions on various topics and stuff. It might be more boring, but fuck it. That's better than it being really corrupt and full of money. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the other thing is we just need to remove money from politics. There should never... Politicians should never like get into politics for money or or even power. It should just be like this thing that someone's driven to do because they they like it, they enjoy it, they want. I, there's like a famous quote, and I tried looking it up, I couldn't find it, and I wish I could, but it's from I think it's from way back, uh, maybe like a Greek philosopher or something that said something like, "Government should be run by people like that don't want to lead." They're doing it because they need to or because it has to be done. It should not be run by people who um, want power or want to lead because then you just run into problems where they're just constantly trying to like get more power, get more money. Um, and we just we run into problems like we are today where it's, it's seemingly extremely corrupt. Um, and this is where I had a couple ideas that might be really cool. Uh, first of all, Congress... And the House should be representatives for various ideas, but they don't vote. 
what what we could have is a system where um, our representatives, you know, they go to the House, they go to the Congress, they talk about different bills, they propose bills, but then they're not the ones that actually vote on whether or not they're passed. They, they, their job is to actually go out then and advertise and like market and say, hey, check out this idea. We, we would like this bill to get passed because we think it would be really great. It, we think it would be beneficial to um, the people in this respect, and it, it pushes forward this social ideal that seems popular now nowadays. Um, so please pass it if you're if you get selected to vote. And then we have a um, just like we have um, jury duty, where it's like this: you get you know a letter in the mail and says you are required to go to jury. We all, we send out letters or whatever to to uh, people all over, randomly selected all over the U.S. and says you are required to vote in two weeks. Um, you'll have a week to place your vote and you know during that week and then you uh, you also get educated about um, what you're voting on and we just require like maybe just even one percent of the population or something that are required to vote like every two weeks all the congressional bills and stuff like that get through. That way that way people would be um, people who are in Congress and, and representatives and stuff would be encouraged to basically like educate people about the bills that are being passed. They would, you know, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be trying to like sneak things through. They would make bills like really understandable and simple to read because if they were too complicated, people would just not know what to vote for and stuff. We need to design a system where, where the checks and balances are like, to encourage people to educate themselves. We can redesign this in a much, much better way, especially nowadays that we have the internet and we have the ability to educate people a lot better. Um, I, I hope I got that idea across. It, it, I, I'm, it's kind of a hard idea to explain, I feel like. Maybe I should, maybe I'll do a blog post where I um, detail it a bit more because I think it could seriously work and be a lot better. Um, which leads to the next thing. We need to we need to improve the education system because obviously we have an issue where a lot of people are uh, either misinformed or they just don't know what to believe. We have so much conflicting information. Uh, so I think and I I think I brought this up in another video about reward based learning. We need to have an education system that's like more practical. That's more about encouraging people to learn independently not just like telling them facts but like here's how you should think you know here's how to think rationally here's how to um, do practical things in life here's how to look up further information things like that that'd be awesome I don't want to spend too much time on that because I think I'm gonna make a video about the education system in the future here uh, another idea was that we could have income caps where like you literally couldn't make more than a certain amount of money and that all the excess money that you made was simply put into a separate account or something and then you still had the freedom to spend that money but you could only spend it on certain things like directly investing in other companies um, donating to charities of your choice or whatever because um, I mean f frankly there there really isn't a need for a certain amount of money after a certain point I mean people probably would hate to hear that uh, because we all like this idea, we're all obsessed in America with this idea that we need to be millionaires or 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 um, or billionaires, or we need to have like all this money so that we can buy mega yachts and and launch space programs, uh, independent personal space programs or something. It's like we don't fucking need that. Jesus Christ, that's just like ex super excessive greed that's been programmed into your head year after year after year. I mean. That is like everyone's ultimate goal is to be rich, and that's just once you can let go of that idea, you start to see how absurd that is. Um, so we could have income caps. That is that is a potential where you can only make us you can only have a certain amount of personal wealth, and everything after is just you can you can choose what you want to do with it, but it needs to be used usefully. Um, uh, yeah, and and I, I think a counter argument, f or not a counter argument for that, but an argument for that is money is a great motivator. Don't get me wrong; it, it is a, an amazing motivator in a lot of ways, but it also appears relatively ineffective, right? Because we have a we have a small percentage of people in the United States that are rich, and a massive amount that are not rich. 
So while it does motivate some people to reach this really high echelon, um, they educate themselves and learn about business and they learn about the tricks, tricks of the trade and they make lots of money, that's just a small percentage. We need a, a system that's more effective at motivating people. Um, because I think a lot of people, once they get to a comfortable spot, they they don't really need more money. They have friends and family and and important things like that, uh, and that it, the problems really arise from the other people that are super obsessed with making money and want you know that when an industry forms around something, that's when we see some horrible greed. Where it's like, um, you get like say the pharmaceutical industry, they want people to be popping pills, you know, because they make more money. They, they don't want certain industries to form because if they do, it reduces their profits. That is like so terrible because we might be like squashing innovation. Um, there's all kinds of stories you can look up like the hemp industry. Um, you know, there's supposedly there's like technologies that were never uh, um, released to the public because they would have like severely injured other industries. If we had like income caps even on corporations and stuff like that, or we where we just had a different motivator where it wasn't just strictly about money or maintaining their survival, where it was more about, uh, you know, like in the other video I talk about an achievement system where people are more motivated just by personal growth, by achieving greatness, not through money, but through the things that they did in life because money isn't all that powerful powerful or that useful. We would have such a better system, um, in my in my opinion, I'm, I think we would. Um, the other argument is that since in, there's a, a video by Sam Harris about free will and and you know one of the arguments is like well if you don't have enough money that's your fault you didn't work hard enough you didn't try you know you didn't do the right things to earn a lot of money and to a degree I mean maybe that's right you know you could have spent more time learning you could have tried harder but the problem there is that if Sam Harris is right and we do not have free will that argument is totally moot because based on your environment, based on what you've previously had happen in your life, you might it might literally be impossible or just, you know, it will never happen. You'll never get to that point where you, you get a higher level of understanding and can make lots of money. Same with the prison system. We have this prison system where we have a very retrib... You know, we're all obsessed with vengeance, retribution, uh, eye for an eye kind of in America. And um, if free will doesn't exist, then our prison system is totally fucked because we have a bunch of people in there that were like, had terrible, uh, they grew up in a terrible environment and they were almost inevitably destined to be in prison. We need a, we need a prison system that's, that's more about like re-educating those people and being like, hey, you are a product of your environment. You do not have to be like this. We can... You know, we need to change your mind in a way that you start to perceive reality more appropriately. Um, although there might be some serious arguments in that, too. But we won't get into it right now. Um, the achievement-based system, which I mentioned just previously, and I mentioned it in another video, I really think that could replace money in a lot of ways. We need to reduce the power of money and, and, and implement some sort of system where... Uh, people do things for their own personal achievement, you know, uh, we could also even have things where they like unlock, like say, say by default, your the income, income cap is at $500,000. You can't make any more than that. And the rest goes to charity. Well, based, maybe if you do things like you are very charitable, you're, you've invented things or you've pushed society forward, you're allowed to have more. Maybe you're allowed to have 750,000 or a million or whatever. The, the numbers are irrelevant. We could figure that out at another time, but we could have a system where it's more about this personal growth about about wearing you know having a medals and and um, your own Wikipedia page and stuff like that <laughs> I know that sounds probably like so petty compared to money but I think I honestly think it could work um, and the last one is the last point is sovereign rights and this is so for instance in Colorado and Washington and California um, well, Co Colorado and Washington, they just passed recreational legalization of marijuana, and California, they have the medical um, dispensaries. But the federal government, marijuana is still completely 100% illegal. Um, 
I've been kind of torn about this issue in terms of having states or ha states having sovereign rights, whether they can, you know, have separate laws, like should the federal government be involved at that level? Um, and that to me is a tough decision. I know that's kind of a heated decision for a lot of people because, you know, having one government rule over 300 million people seems absurd. How can you ever have laws that apply to everyone? Um, say, you know, for drug legalization, there are a lot of people out there that could smoke weed just like they drink alcohol. It could just be this thing that they do to unwind or, you know, there are different strands of marijuana. There's the sativa strand, which is like this intellectual strand that makes you have more creative thinking and it doesn't make you all lazy and dopey that people like have this perception. It makes you more interested in things. Um, you know, there are people out there that could, that would love to be able to just per purchase weed and smoke it and have creative thinking and just you know they would mind their own business it wouldn't be a menace to society um, just like alcohol there are people that can drink alcohol fine and then there are people that are drunks um, it's having sovereign rights having the states have the ability to make have laws where I could move to Colorado and have recreational weed and if I don't want that as part of you know maybe I have children and I don't want them to um, have the ability to go out and buy you know, easily get weed um, like alcohol or whatever, then don't, you know, don't live there. It would may, maybe it would be really cool if we had, you could choose what state yeah. you wanted to live in. Um, and, uh, sorry, my mumble just went off. Uh, you could have, you know, you could choose the state you wanted to live in and it would reflect your opinions and stuff like that. That could be really cool. The only problems that I see with that is that, you know, you could have states that kind of fall behind because they don't implement proper social programs that are, like, universally recognized as a good thing. But because the state has sovereign rights, they choose not to, and then they kind of fall behind. You know, what if we had a state where they had really old social programs, and, like, 50 years from now, everyone's looking and going, like, God, I mean, they're, they're, they're terrible. They're so far behind. I mean, maybe that would be a really bad thing. I, could, I can picture scenarios where that would be really, really bad. Um, so I don't know, sovereign, sovereign rights is a, a tough topic. It's hard to say how that would play out. Maybe you could only have it, you know, maybe social programs should be state right. But then again, you know, you run into problems. So I don't, the problem is it's so damn complex. It's hard to come up with a system that, that fits everything, but we can do a lot better. Do not think for a second that the way things are is the way things have to be we can change. The universe is so crazily complex. There are so many different paths that we can take. It's foolish to think that the way it is, the way that we have our, our democracy to set up, our capitalism set up, is the way that it has to be. That is totally 100% false. We can change however we want to be as a society. That's how we can be. Um, the other thing is that democracy is inherently bad. People think democracy is super awesome, but think about it for a second. Democracy means basically that 50% of the people are happy and 50% of the people are pissed off because they didn't get their way. That is a terrible system. We can do better than that. Okay, so that was just some various ideas I had in regards to government and politics. Um, if you have any uh, comments about it, any criticisms or maybe some other ideas or whatever, just share them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Um, and remember that just like the title of the series, they are nothing definitive. They are just different ideas. Um, they are not truths or anything like that. So thank you very much for listening. Stay tuned to future episodes. And if you haven't, please consider subscribing. Um, I have a lot more episodes planned, so there will be plenty of new content. Uh, yeah, see you next time.